is one of those bodies, then it thinks that it can be attacked. Yeah. And has attacked. And has attacked. In the past. Yeah. Whether it's violent way or just screaming and yelling at someone or frowning even. You know, it's, as long as the mind believes in the reality of the body, then it believes attack is real, it believes guilt is real, and it believes that it's thrown away the kingdom of heaven for good. So what we're going to try to do is work it back to, to the point of saying that the attack isn't real. So the bodies just act out the wrong-minded thoughts. Yeah. So anytime you talk about reality of the body, you're automatically talking about misidentification then with the body. The special love relationship is the ego's chief weapon for keeping you from heaven. It does not appear to be a weapon. But if you consider how you value it and why, you will realize what it must be. The special love relationship is the ego's most boasted gift and one which has the most appeal to those unwilling to relinquish guilt. That sentence should give you a little bit of a hint. Jesus does not mince words, so when he's talking about most boasted gift, it's, we talked, I think, um, Becca was using the word insidious. <laughs> yes, it's insidious, it's elusive, it's it's obscure, it's a, it's like a mirage of something that seems really good and really attractive, and the more you look at its foundation, <laughs> the more you see, hmm, this is no good. <laughs> it's ego gifts always boil down pain. I mean, that's the common denominator of all the ego's gifts, quote, unquote. Yeah, that idea of ego's gifts, I never heard, heard put that way quite like you did before, which is we wouldn't hold on to this at all if the ego didn't allure us with some sort of gift. Yes. Seductive. It's a seductive gift. Yeah. Very seductive. Yeah. I'll keep the pain to take this gift. It's, it almost seems worth it. Mm-hmm. 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 And this waking up would be easy as a snap. It wouldn't seem so rare. Like, oh, great, <laughs> Jesus. How many... Mm-hmm. How many awakened beings do you have? You know, can you count them on one hand yeah. or whatever? You know, it seems to be this thing of, in this world, like a really difficult achievement. Like it's nothing to be a billionaire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that would be a piece of cake compared to waking up from the dream. And yet, it's these seductive gifts that's what what makes it seem so elusive and difficult. The quote dynamics of the ego are clearest here, for counting on the attraction of this offering, the fantasies that center around it are often quite overt. Here they are usually judged to be acceptable and even natural. And that's again, I I was pointing to the idea the other day that a lot of times things that are judged to be very natural in this world are actually disguised forms of attack. They don't seem to be attack at all. So the mind says, what's the harm? What's the big deal, you know? <laughs> it continues on with the fantasies. Exactly. You brought that up one point when you were discussing counseling a friend earlier in the morning where you were talking about a lot of fantasies in male-female relationships even. They're judged to be quite normal. It's, it's like, well, yeah, everybody seems to have a fantasy life, whether it's whether it's sexual fantasies, whether it's fantasies about um, far off lands, fantasies about being on Maui, or (laughs) daydreaming kind of fantasies or whatever, those seem to be a normal part of life, that that's part of the human condition. And again, Jesus is saying, well, those thoughts are not part of your right mind. So when you're thinking of the past or thinking of the future, he says at one point in the workbook, your mind is literally blank. Well, that's a different definition. It seems like as if you go through a day, your mind is filled with real thoughts. Jesus is saying, think again. Your mind is really blank because it's it's filled with ego thoughts. And that's it's the same as being filled with nothingness. Another example that came to my mind is that, that psychology book that I was telling you I was looking at and how it was describing, you know, normal developmental psychology is that when a baby is born, there is a natural, they call it attachment 
that takes place between the mother and the infant. And that that is, if it doesn't happen, it's considered to be very abnormal and then the child is considered to be at high risk. If the bonding does not take place, it's either called bonding or attachment. And um, and as I was reading it, just I mean, I learned all that stuff. I taught it. <laughs> I used to teach it, you know. And um, but reading it, I'm just seeing, oh, this is so funny how it's so backwards, you know, that this is just considered to be natural and normal. And if you don't get this attachment that's just, you know, painful in the end, it always is, that that's considered to be abnormal. And unhealthy. Yeah, the child goes, and then they described even how the child goes through pain when it's attached to the mother, and the mother leaves the room, the child is in pain. You know, and so they would do studies about, you know, attachment, the attachment of the babies, and that some babies would cry when the mother would leave, and other babies would just ignore the mother, and other babies would, you know, be like nervous, or, you know, so just all this craziness. The ego enjoys setting itself, and all a lot of the books that are written, again, are from the ego perspective. Yes. Like, uh, anybody who studies you know, human development, you know, even with babies, the, the, re, the sucking reflex, yes. the, what do they call it, where the, 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 Binsky, the Binsky Binsky reflex. reflex. Here comes Jesus along and he says, no, reflexes are not in the body. The startle reflex. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, there you go. You study these things and it's like, accept it. There's, there are whole professions that are built on it. And it really is just the ego studying itself. Like some of the pain and deprivation or whatever that, that's observed. Again, it's, it's just like, um, it's just re restating the problem. It's not getting at where the pain come from, comes from. It's not really getting at the mind, or going into the mind and looking at the ego. It's just describing the problem. All the stages of pain that people seem to go through, through adolescence, you know, through middle age, menopause, you know, all the things that are described, it's just really describing the problem. The problem in quotes, yeah. because it's the problem as it's seen on the screen, yeah. not the problem as it as it is yes. in the mind. Yeah, it's restating something where really it's not getting at the problem at all. Which is the belief in separation. That's why dynamics in that sentence, the yeah. quote dynamics of the ego are clear as here. The ego really has no dynamics. Dynamics implies power, and it's a delusional system. So how can a, a delusional system really have dynamics, really have power, movement? It's all, it's all an illusion. Yeah, so as I'm thinking about the hysteria of a mother <laughs> being in the hospital and babies getting switched, if this is all inclusive, what difference would it make what baby you got? If this is holy relationships, what difference does surrogate motherhood make? They even talked about that Did in this I? book. That they said that the attachment is so strong that even mothers who they found that the babies had been switched, they were not willing to give up the baby that they were attached to, even mm -hmm. though they knew this other baby was really theirs. Which mm -hmm. all, I mean, all of it's just totally it's nuts. All nuts. But, but that yeah. they were saying that's how strong mm -hmm. the attachment is, that you wouldn't even want to give up this baby that's not even yours. Or natural. And there's a big one too. A lot yeah. of times kids will find out at some point in their life, you mean I'm not really your child? Where is yeah. my mother and father? Yeah. You know, and then it's this mm -hmm. big hunt, you know, and there's been a lot of movies and books about that and everything, but it's this identity confusion. Yes. There's, there's a real deep identity confusion mm -hmm. that gets projected out to you know, natural versus adopted mm -hmm. and all these and, things. And guess what? We all have an identity <laughs> confusion. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not just... And if we just for a moment we extend it beyond the human realm to the biological world, you know, the natural world, you know, they, the Alistair Cook and all the different people that have studied, you know, the mating habits of all these <laughs> creatures and everything and the bonding times yes. and... and all the different rites of passage and 
and different things that go on, you know, whatever, alligators or you name it. I mean, it's all made up. I mean, even these people have will say there are some things that are instinctual, that are not learned, you know, from a mother bird to the baby bird, but they're instinctual, and there are some things that are learned. And what we're learning from the Course is, well, there's only mind, and Jesus is teaching there aren't really any instincts in the body. That's just a projection. So everything's learned. But again, you pull it back and you can say, well, what does this mean for the learning of a mother hen? Or, you know, no, no, it's not about that. It's about bringing it back to my mind and starting to see, I've learned this whole world. I've, I've learned, like Mary was saying the other day, from Adam and Eve, what if we've learned everything wrong? Mm -hmm. The Course is saying that the entire world that's been learned is an illusion. Everything. Not part of it. Not 80% or 90% or 95%, but the whole thing mm -hmm. is learned. And the good news is it can be unlearned. <laughs> yeah. No one considers it bizarre to love and hate together. And even those who believe that hate is sin merely feel guilty, but do not correct it. This is the, quote, natural condition of the separation. And those who learn that it is not natural at all seem to be the unnatural ones. Are you getting that feeling as you go, <laughs> go along this path? When you hear the words like, I don't know that this is possible, what you're talking about. It sounds like a fairy tale and whatever, on and on and on. That's, they, the, those that start to see that it is possible seem to be the unnatural ones in this world. Like, go on, go out, get a job, and be like everybody else. You, you ask too many questions. <laughs> you know? and, and that's the... To me, that's been a real experience. And even the thing of not ever even questioning that love and hate could go together. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, just the, the lines about, well, there's a thin line between love and hate. You know, we just accept that. Mm -hmm. Say, well, yeah, I guess it's true. Mm -hmm. I hate people that I love the most. Mm -hmm. seems to be mm -hmm. the most intense hatred I feel is mm -hmm. for those people at times. How can that be? The old cliche, that's just the way life is. You've mm -hmm. got to take the good mm -hmm. with the bad. How, how many the bad times? With the, good. the bad with the good. How, mm -hmm. how many times have I that heard that? That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And what goes up must come down. If it goes down, don't worry, it'll come up again to go down. That's life. It comes around, goes around. Mm -hmm. 